The time is finally here. What you've been waiting on all season long. Tennessee football camp has started. And we are just, what, 31 days away from football time in Tennessee. Practice begins today. And already a big-time injury note. Who's it about? And what's that mean? We'll discuss all on today's Locked on Balls. You are Locked on Balls, your daily podcast on the Tennessee Volunteers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, everybody? Welcome into it. This is Locked On Balls, a Monday edition, and it's a special Monday edition because, hey, fall camp is here. The time is now. Football season has started. Talking season's over. The pads come on, well, the pads don't come on today, but, you know, they'll be out there in the cleats and the helmets and all that, getting adjusted to things. Pads will come on later this week, uh, but we are here. So congratulations for making it all the way through football season, through baseball season, through no season when there was nothing going on at all. And now here it is, a football season. I'm going to bring you daily practice reports and everything from on the hill at Rocky Top. Uh, every single day right here only at Locked On Balls because, hey, I'm there every single day. You can find this podcast on Twitter at underscore Kaner and at Locked On Balls. Twitter Tuesday is coming up tomorrow where I take any questions that you guys have, and I'll do my best to answer them on tomorrow's show. That's at underscore Kaner at Locked On Balls. Dive in those DMs or tweet me. And, of course, I do radio in Knoxville, Tennessee. You hear me on 99.1 The Sports Animal and the rival site covering Tennessee. That is VolQuest.com. All right, let's get into it. Ben McKee will be here in segments two and three coming up later in the show. Uh, But first, I want to go over some of the highlights from Media Day, which happened on Sunday uh, to kind of kick off Tennessee's uh, spring, not spring practice, Tennessee's fall camp. A couple of things. The biggest thing of note, Laneith Whitehead. He's not uh, a star player for this offense, but he is a running back. Tennessee had four. Tennessee had five scholarship running backs in the room heading to fall camp. It was already thin to begin with. And Laneith Whitehead, it comes out, Austin Price, my colleague of VolQuest.com, broke the news that he has an upper body injury and he is going to be he's going to be out for the remainder of the season, the entire season. He's going to miss it before it even starts. And so uh, very unfortunate there for Laneith Whitehead. So there is a big time critical concern there for uh, for this offense. And, and quite frankly, it's um, it's kind of nerve wracking. Uh, that said, I do believe Tennessee will add to its current roster right now with a late addition via the transfer portal. Uh, at the time of this recording, it's not been official. Maybe it will be coming up later in the week, but I will say this former four star and Clemson running back and actually transferred to West Virginia. Now, maybe coming to Tennessee, Lynn J. Dixon was on campus on Sunday visiting uh, Tennessee. So, if all goes well, you could potentially have Lynn J. Dixon join that group in the running back room as well. Hey, real quick, here is Josh Heupel on the Whitehead injury and, um, you know, that the but the overall health of his team excluding that when entering fall camp. Yeah, uh, Lanif will be out uh, uh, for the entire year this year, just sustained an upper body injury um, a couple of weeks ago and, and had season ending surgery. Um, but for the rest of our football team, uh, we're really pretty healthy. Um, there's some guys that um, will build up through uh, the course of training camp. Uh, Latrell Bumpus, uh, somebody that you know missed a, a portion of spring ball that will continue to build up. Um, but uh, we're really in a really healthy situation here moving into training camp. Let's say with Josh Heupel here, uh, the first question of his uh, opening press conference was obviously, and you got to ask him because we don't get that many uh, opportunities, especially in the offseason, to chat with the head football coach. Uh, but it was on the notice of allegations and and kind of what was his response to the notice of allegations. Are you relieved in a sense that it was out there and you can kind of you know, put that one step behind you and move on? Uh, what's it mean for recruits and how you're recruiting and all that? Here's what Josh Heupel had to say on the uh, his response to the notice of allegations that came out uh, last Friday. Yeah, I, I don't know that uh, relieved is, is really the word. It, it's There's been so much dialogue and communication between our administration and the NCAA, but also just to us and, and where we're at. So some of the things that hit publicly are some things that we haven't been able to talk about. We knew uh, that was coming. And uh, we've been very transparent and open with our current roster, our recruits. Uh, that's why I think uh, we've positioned ourselves uh, extremely well. Um, you know, you look at some of the things that have come out of that, uh, just sensibly talking about uh, us being a model of, of how to move forward for, for universities when they're dealing with, with something. That's why I've, from the very beginning I've said it, it's really just a speed bump uh, for this program and uh, between our, our administration, 
uh, from uh, Dondi uh, all the way down to uh, you know Danny, and then what we're doing on the football side of it. I think we positioned ourselves extremely uh, well to, to swallow things up here uh, early and, and be able to move and compete for championships here as we move forward. Yeah, for for us, we've been very transparent um, with the, the two recruiting classes that we've uh, been involved with since our staff has gotten here. One that's signed, one that hasn't. Uh, because of that, I think there's great trust from them. Uh, we've been able to to talk openly about the the things that we were doing inside of our program uh, that we were taking um, in year one and year two. Um, once the notice of allegations came out, being able to have a, a Zoom call with all of them and be able to uh, you know speak more directly about the things that we're doing. This recruiting class, you know, really hasn't felt the things that we're doing internally. And uh, so they can understand that, you know, the things that are going to happen in the future won't have an impact on, on how they're being recruited, uh, their experience as a, a student athlete here on campus and what they're going to be able to compete for on the football field. As we move on and discuss some of the highlights from Media Day's coverage of Tennessee football camp that happened Sunday afternoon, we continue to move on. We go to the defensive side of the football. Tim Banks, defensive coordinator. One of the biggest questions we have entering fall camp is what's the secondary going to look like? And in particular, what's one of those variables going to look like? And a guy like Christian Charles who can, can play just a little bit of everything. Well, Tim Banks discussed Christian Charles and where he'll start out practicing uh, come fall camp which is said to begin today with practice number one. Here is Tennessee's defensive coordinator on a rising, uh, really, really good athlete, Christian Charles, and where he'll be in the defensive secondary. Yeah, um, I, th I think he'll primarily start off at corner, but understanding that he has the ability to move back inside. I mean, he's the poster child for, again, what we're looking for, you know, guys that are very interchangeable, you know, corner skills, um, but the mentality and the physicality to be able to play inside. Um, so, you know, he'll get an opportunity to win one of those jobs at corner, but he'll also get a chance to win one of the jobs at, you know, safety. So it, it just depends, you know. But right now, based on how we left spring is the way we'll start it, and then we'll go from there. So that's a little interesting. Christian Charles is going to get the starts at practice. I'm not saying he's the starter or first string, but uh, at cornerback and really going to be battling with Kamal Haddon and with Warren Burrell and with Deshaun Rucker and some of those other guys, Desmond Williams. I'll be really intrigued to see – where he might be this time next week, if it's in safety, if it's still a corner, could it be a star? He's going to play somewhere. I'll tell you that regardless. He's going to play somewhere. But uh, interested to hear from Tim Banks on that right there. So, uh, you know, some, some noteworthy things coming out of uh, of Sunday. Let's stay with Tim Banks. Let's continue on. If Tennessee's going to be good, it's got to be good up front. It's got to be good with the four-man rush. And the two guys, the two veterans on the end, Byron Young, who could be one of the better players in the SEC, and then Tyler Barron, who should be one of the better players on this team, you know, what have they done well? The importance of those two guys on the line first, Tim Banks on Byron Young, and then it'll be Tim Banks on Tyler Barron. Yeah, tremendous. You know, and I would say first, just from a leadership perspective, you know, we put him in some different situations during the offseason where he had to be more verbal. And um, I thought he answered the bell. Um, I don't think that was his natural um, instinct is to be able to lead from the front. But he's worked very hard to be very vocal. And I think as, he, as he's become more vocal, he's become more confident. He obviously has a skill set. You know, he plays extremely hard. I think he worked very hard to try to refine his, his technique and his overall knowledge of the game. And I think we'll start to see that pay some dividends moving forward. So I'm excited about him. You know, I would echo this for him the same thing that I said about Jeremy Banks. I think he has the ability to be one of the better players in this conference, if not the country. Um, but obviously, he's got to continue to work at that at that pace, and so far, he's done that. Yes, yeah, and again, I hate to sound like a broken record, but once again, I'm excited about Tyler. You know, he's healthy. You know, um, Ty Tyler's a guy who has you know unbelievable you know uh, strength, power, speed to power ratio, and um, he's obviously a guy that's really really bright. You know, he's able to play the Leo spot for us. He's also played the end spot for us. Um, he has that versatility that I spoke about with the corners, being able to play inside and outside. He's a guy who has the ability to be able to play either either side of our defense, you know, and has the ability to slide inside, you know, based on situations. So um, I, I think as he continues to, you know, take care of his body and as he stays healthy, um, I think he has a chance again to have a really big year for us. And um, I think he would tell you the same thing. You know, he's worked his tail off this offseason, and I think he's primed for a big year. I want you to see and hear from, if you're watching on YouTube, you're going to see these clips and all these video. It's a, it's, um, I, I got it from VolQuest.com. I work there, so it's legal. I got to put that in there. Uh, video courtesy of VolQuest.com, I guess is what I should say. 
Uh, but uh, we're going to see Alex Goish. You're going to hear Alex Goish uh, discussing the slot position. And, and that's something I'll talk to, uh, with Ben McKee about here in just a moment. But uh, it's, a, it's a really good battle coming in. Jalen Hyatt's going to play an awful lot. He's probably going to lead that group. But you're pretty stacked at the slot position when you think about it in terms of talent. You've got uh, Jalen Hyatt, Jimmy Callaway. You've got Squirrel White, the true freshman that you're going to hear Alex Goish speak very, very highly on. And uh, you've got Walker Mar uh, Morrell, who can also play there as well. So uh, here's Alex Golish on that slot position. And then later in the clip, he's very, he's absolutely blunt about Jimmy Callaway. And uh, you need to listen to this. Um, here's Alex Golish, Tennessee's offensive coordinator. Yeah, I think that that competition in the slot um, with with Jalen and and Jimmy and and Squirrel. You know, with Walker being able to get some in there as well, I think Walker's experience a year ago was priceless because he's a guy we feel like could be a swing guy for us. Um, I'm excited to see see all three of those guys. I think, you know, Jalen had a really, really good spring. Uh, Jimmy finished spring really well. Uh, and Squirrel was, was so exciting to see this spring just because of what his mental makeup is, what, what his skill set is. That, He's in so many ways, Squirrel in so many ways is mature beyond his years. Uh, but I've said this before, I, I think so much of what, what a season is, is who can handle it. Um, who can handle, the camp is one thing, there's no school, there's no outside pressure, there's no, no anything going on. And then students get back to school, Cumberland looks a little bit different. There's academics, there's tutors, there's requirements, there's people pulling you, there's families in for games and there's there starts to be a lot of distractions and I think so much of playing college football right now is who can handle that part of it um, you know obviously there's more more distractions than there ever has been so who can handle the rigors of the day-to-day -day and be be consistent through what they're doing um, and I, I've said this about freshmen before it, it's all pretty easy until you get going into a routine of what a season looks like um, Squirrel for a freshman was was as impressive handling school and football at the same time as I've seen. Uh, probably because he just kind of stays to himself and doesn't let outside distractions affect who he is and what he does. Again, it's going to get harder and harder for him. But that competition in there, again, if if we leave there with some depth, I would be beyond excited. That would be better than we were a year ago. Um, you know, Jalen Hyatt took monumental steps in the spring uh, just in terms of his growth as a player and as, as a young man within the program. Jimmy Callaway has been super inconsistent uh, since our time here. So the challenge to him is can you, can you be the same guy every day and continue to grow? Um, because it's going to be really hard if not. Um, and you asked about the three freshmen. Um, same deal. I, I think it'll be interesting to see how they attack this, this next three weeks and then once school starts and we get into playing games, how, how they really um, can grow and continue to become assets in the team. To the team, I think, you know, if you'd love to get those guys out there and get them into games early on special teams and, and let, them, let them see what it's like to be a college football player and, and then see how they can help us offensively. It'd be great if, if all three of those guys panned out as freshmen and we had depth like that, boy, we would be, we would be really good. There you heard it, Alex Golish on the slot position, and then when he when discussing Jimmy Callaway, he says super inconsistent, which isn't a dig; it's being truthful. Um, and as you'll hear me and Ben talk about here in a moment, uh, Jimmy Callaway's got all the potential in the world. So it'll be interesting to see what he looks like in this fall camp. So I uh, wanted to play some audio, wanted to play some video for you guys, so you can hear for yourself from Josh Heupel, Tennessee's football head coach, and then of course the coordinators. Offensive coordinator Alex Golish and defensive coordinator Tim Banks. But the two biggest storylines coming out of Media Day, which is officially day one of fall camp, but practice gets going later today. Lenith Whitehead running back out for the year with an injury, upper body injury. And uh, Christian Charles is going to start out practicing at cornerback uh, here at fall camp. We'll see if Tennessee adds to the running back room as the week goes on. Um, my bet my bet would be probably yes, but uh, of course we will have to see with Lynn J. Dixon on campus and visiting on Sunday afternoon. All right, Ben McKee, VolQuest.com, one of my good friends, is going to come up and chat in segments two and three uh, to kind of kick off uh, fall camp right here. But first, I want to thank LinkedIn for being one of our sponsors of today's show. As you gear up for fall, the right people you need the right people on your team to help your small businesses fire on all cylinders. LinkedIn Jobs is here to make it easier to find people that you want to talk to faster and for free. Create job posting minutes on LinkedIn Jobs to reach your network and beyond 
to the world's largest professional network of over 810 million people. Then add your job with the purple hashtag hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you're hiring so your network can help you find the right people to hire. Simple tools like screening questions make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience so that you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and ultimately hire. It's why small businesses rank LinkedIn jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus its leading competitors. LinkedIn jobs helps you find the candidates you want to talk to faster. Did you know that every single week, nearly 40 million job seekers visit LinkedIn? So go ahead and post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions do apply. Want to bring on the show my good buddy Ben McKee of VolQuest.com as we gear up for another football season. A lot going on right now. A lot of storylines to begin the Tennessee football camp. Ben, what's up, dude? What's up, man? How are you? I'm just I'm just hoping a baby doesn't cry. Okay. I'm just hoping that the baby can be considerate and not cry during the middle of our video. But yeah, Ben McKee's a new father of about a week or two. So congratulations to that once again. Thank you. Thank you. Hopefully uh at eight days old, Knox can can mind his own business and, and keep to himself and, and not act like a baby. That that's been my running joke when he cries. Qu- quit acting like a baby, dude. Come on. <laughs> we, yeah, we're not going to have any softness in this house. You need to stop acting like a beta and start acting like an alpha. Like you get it together. You eight year old human being or eight, eight, day, eight old day old. Human. There you go. <laughs> yeah. No, it's, Knox, that's weird to say eight day old. Knox Scott McKee, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. Knox Scott. Knox is, pretty obvious and, and speaks for itself. My my wife and I love Knoxville, started our, our life and family here, and then my dad's name is Scott. So that, that's how that came about. Awesome. Well, congratulations to you and Savannah. That That's uh, that's awesome news. Tennessee football getting going uh, today. Day one of fall camp. Media day was yesterday. Uh, you know, you had Alex Golish, Tim Banks, the coordinators, of course, Josh Heupel. We had, I think, nine, nine players take to the podium and uh, really a breakout session for media availability. Is anything big that kind of stood out to you from media day on Sunday for Tennessee football camp? I don't think this is necessarily big, Eric, but as I was driving home and I kind of sitting here reflecting and, and we are recording this uh, a little while after departing campus, so fresh on the mind, the one thing that continues to stick out in my mind is Joe Milton. Again, not, not a huge storyline, not – the, the most important storyline, uh, Tim Banks talked about Christian Charles starting at, at corner. Uh, there were some nice comments about receivers from Alex Golish and uh, Jalen Hyatt having a good offseason, Jimmy Calloway having a, a nice summer after finishing spring ball pretty strong, and, and he spoke really highly of Squirrel White as, as well. He had high praise for Squirrel White saying that he's never really seen a, a freshman or at least Squirrel is up there with any freshman that he has seen in terms of managing football and the academic side of things when he first got to campus. So that, yeah. that spoke volumes to me. He kind of called out uh, Miles Campbell at the tight end position. So th- those are more important storylines. I think who's going to start tackle opposite uh, of Darnell Wright. Uh, Darnell is going to start at right tackle because that's where he is most comfortable. And then they're going to let Jeremiah Crawford, Gerald Mincy, Dane Davis kind of hash it out over there on, on the left side. So those things are obviously far more important who steps up opposite of Cedric Tillman, but I can't stop thinking about Joe Milton because yeah. uh, yes, he is this fascinating. I, I don't want to call him a creature because that can, can be a little bit disrespectful, but just uh, in, in terms of like the myth of Joe Milton and, and his arm strength and his athleticism. And, and obviously the myth of Joe Milton uh, really reached an apex last season, but before the, the season opener when he was named the starter and, uh, didn't go according to plan, uh, and he's still here. And I don't think a lot of us would have assumed that he would still be here this season, that second half of the season last year after Hendon Hooker had really taken over and, and run with the job. And here is Joe Milton still here. And, and what stood out to me and what I'm ultimately getting to is that, to me, just in listening to him talk, he has really bought in to the thought process that he's one sprained ankle away from being the starting quarterback. And, and – yeah. Obviously, he and he doesn't wish that upon uh, Hendon Hooker. Him, him and Hendon have just a, a marvelous relationship, one that you would not uh, really realize. They're roommates. Uh, they're the only two roommates in their house. Uh, Joe Milton said that 
he calls Hendon's mom, mom, and Hendon calls Joe's mom, mom. So you probably wouldn't think that two competing quarterbacks would, would have that great of a friendship, but they do. Uh, Joe's so got a pit bull. Joe's, I learned yeah, that today. I, I like that. Yeah, I, f- I forget the names off the top of my head, but he, he did mention that in, 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 in the interview, if anybody can go find that. Uh, so you, he doesn't wish ill will towards Hendon, obviously, I, I, even aside from being best friends. Hopefully he wouldn't w- – wish ill will in order to be the starting quarterback, but he does have the confidence and recognition that he is one play away, one injury to Hendon away from being the guy. And that is the mindset that he needs to have. And I don't know that maybe we anticipated him having that mindset because he he was a highly ranked recruit, was at Michigan, came to Tennessee with a lot of hype. Uh, so that that's kind of what's been sticking out in my mind is the Joe Milton storyline not the most prominent but it really seems like he's he's betting on himself he he still has a ton of confidence in himself is talking about getting to the nfl and uh he, he's really buying into the role of supporting hendon as best as he can but also recognizing that he's one play away from being the starting quarterback at the university of tennessee and i mean you hope and this is no disrespect to him but you hope that joe milton's never a thing here in tennessee again at least this year right because that would mean your starting quarterback, Hendon Hooker, goes down with injury. But if he is pressed into action, you want it to be a veteran. You want it to be a guy that's played a whole lot of football. You want it to be a guy that has that mindset that has a good relationship with his with his counterpart, Hendon Hooker. I mean, it's um, I didn't know they were roommates before today. Um, I didn't know that. I mean, I had heard, you know, a lot of this is, you know, talk like, oh, yeah, we're boys. Yeah, we support one another. But I mean, I truly do see it with those two guys. So you want that type of guy that has that mindset and, um, and Hendon Hooker said it today. He was like, I still to this day, I truly believe Joe Milton could be the best quarterback in the country right now. And and I, if everything were to click, the intangibles are there. We've seen them. It's just, you know, there's a lot more to that than, you know, just the intangibles of playing quarterback. So uh, nonetheless, one thing I want to ask you about real quick is uh, y- you said that Alex Golish kind of called out Miles Campbell at the tight end position. He really called out Jimmy Callaway at the slot position, saying he was, quote, super inconsistent since the staff has been on campus. I think you and I both agree that Jimmy Callaway is probably, you know, one of the mo- more talented guys in that receiver room. Um, it's do or die time for him at wide receiver, I feel like. And he's still a guy that I think is kind of on the outside looking in this year, but has unbelievable talents that, you know, this team could really use. Yes, I, I completely agree with with what you said. I mean, he has the ability, talking about Joe Milton and what Hendon said about Joe and how he could possibly be, the best quarterback in the country because of his skill set that Joe has. Jimmy Callaway fits that same bill. Uh, he he yeah. has a, a great natural skill set that you can't really teach that, that a lot of guys don't have. Uh, he and Jalen Hyatt. I, I lump those two together. Uh, I, I do think Jalen was more complacent as a sophomore than anything, whereas Jimmy Callaway was not necessarily handling his business. So I, I do think – they each didn't play as much as we anticipated uh, because they weren't handling their business Monday through Friday, but for different reasons, uh, if, if that makes sense. But both have just absolute <laughs> unreal ability. And, and if Tennessee can can tap into that and you can find a way to get that much explosive production from the slot, and, and you have Cedric Tillman, one of the best receivers in the country, on, on one outside – and then assuming all goes well with Drew McCoy and he lives up to the hype, if you can get Jimmy yeah. Calloway, uh, Jalen Hyatt, and then a squirrel white, that's what we learned about the slot position and the receiver position today or Sunday, in my opinion, is that in the slot, it's those three guys, squirrel white, Jimmy Calloway, Jalen Hyatt, which isn't great news for Walker Merrill, in my opinion. Uh, but if you can have those two older guys in the slot really, really come on and, and reach their potential, and it goes along with Cedric Tillman doing his thing and Brew McCoy living up to the hype, that's one of the best receiver rotations, starting three, that, that you'll find in the SEC and in the country. So uh, I completely agree with you. J- Jimmy Callaway, he, he finished spring s- strong, uh, seems to have carried that over into the summer. And if, if that can lead to a strong fall camp and, and he – be a, a real contributor to this mm-hmm. offense. I mean, I it, Kane, I don't know about you, but I mean, we're talking about a totally different offense if if a guy like that steps up in addition to Cedric Tillman. Yep, I would agree. He's got unbelievable talent. It's just a matter of you know finding the middle ground, the good days, more bad days than good days, but finding that middle ground and being consistent. 
as is usually the case with us, uh, we're at nine minutes in this conversation. I've got like three more questions I've got to ask you. So I'm going to do this to you on the spot here. So you can't say no. We're going to bring you back here for segment three. Um, running back took a major blow on Sunday. You know, what's the what's the potential there at the running back position? More with, me, more with Ben McKee coming up here in just one second. But first, let me say about Bet Online. It's the fastest, it's the easiest way to check in on all your betting needs. You can find all your favorite sports, the events at the number one source, all your odds, lines, and games. Find reviews, find news for every single league. That includes Major League Baseball, which is going on right now. NFL is right around the corner. Of course, college football, NBA, NHL, the combat sports, esports, golf, both PGA, live golf, reality televisions, whatever you want, you can find it. At Bet Online, it continues to be the top online resource for all your sports wagering information, live in game betting scores, podcasts, everything there. It's got you covered. So head on over to the website today that's betonline.net, or you can use your mobile device to learn about all the latest trends and all the action happening right now. Betonline.net, it is where the game starts. Welcome back here to a Monday Locked on Vols, and we're talking all Tennessee football as fall camp 2022 is set to practice right now. It's, it's getting underway, and I've got Ben McKee, my buddy over here from VolQuest.com. We teased it, uh, the running back room, which was already super thin, all right, five scholarship running backs in that room. VolQuest breaks the news, Austin Price of uh, Lenith Whitehead missing the entire season with an upper body injury. So you've got four guys in that room right now. Tennessee is trying to add to that room, trying to find reinforcements. But right now, I mean, that's you, you need another body in the worst way because half of that room now, two of which are true freshmen and Justin Williams Thomas and Dylan Sampson. Yes. Yeah, so look, I like the four guys in the room. I, I like Jabari Small. I, I really like Jalen Wright. And, and he's up there uh, at, towards the top of my list of potential breakout players uh, on offense or defense, just breakout players for Tennessee, potential breakout players. This season, I think Jalen Wright is up there towards the top. I think his skill set and what he brings to the table fits perfectly in this Josh Heupel offense. And that's the same case uh, for Dylan Sampson. And then, and then Justin Williams Thomas is just a, a freak of an athlete. I mean, that that kid should not look the way that he does for, for a true freshman. I, I know football players and athletes nowadays, they, they look ridiculous at a very young age. But he, even in today's standard, uh, Justin Williams Thomas is just whew, that that yep. that kid is locked and loaded and, and ready for some SEC football from a physicality standpoint. So I like all the guys in the room. I even like Lenith Whitehead, but there's but there's not really a sense of dynamic ability in the room. Uh, I, I think they're still searching for that explosive playmaking. Uh, Lynn J. Dixon, the transfer from West Virginia uh, by way of Clemson. Uh, former highly rated recruit, a four-star, I believe. He he visited on Sunday, and by the time this is released, it it, it may be out that he's officially a ball. Uh, but he he's a guy that I, I don't know how much he's going to add in terms of. It's not like you're adding um, an Eric Gray, uh, and, and he's going to rush for a thousand yards or, or seven hundred, eight hundred yards. Alabama went out and and added Jameer Gibbs. Uh, and Jameer Gibbs is going to rush for over a thousand yards. You're not adding that in Lynn J. J in Lynn J. Dixon if that does become official. But uh, he's a guy who's played college football in the ACC, Big Twelve. Uh, he, he's going to be able to to not drown in big time moments. And, and like you said, simply, it's just an, another body, and, and hopefully he can be more than that. Is my point. You, you need another body, but hopefully you can add some productiveness. In that body, because again, I, I like Jabari Small. I think he's a a really solid SEC back. He's just not a game changer. And, and, dur uh, and durability, J there's an issue there. Yes, yes, he he's struggled to stay healthy. He has absolutely struggled to stay healthy. That's a great point. Uh, and then again, I like the future of Jalen Wright. I like the future of Dylan Sampson and, and Justin Williams Thomas. But they're all young. The two of them are true freshmen who have never played a snap of college football, and one of them was a true freshman. So. Uh, unless one of those guys really do have a breakout season, as I was talking about earlier, you, you don't really have any explosiveness or, or game changers at the moment. Again, no disrespect to Jabari Small, especially. I think he's really productive. It wouldn't surprise me to see him have 700, 800 yards to 1,000 yards. I, I, I do think he is good. But in, in terms of that game-changing type of running back, Tennessee lacks that. Absolutely lacks that. And not that Lynn J. Dixon is all of a sudden going to be that, but more so speaking to why Tennessee has looked for a running back all, all throughout the offseason, 
despite returning Jabari Small and Jalen Wright. So uh, nice to add a body if they do, in fact, add Lynn J. Dixon. Uh, but hopefully it's a little more than just simply adding a body because I do think it would be nice to, to add some production within that body. Yeah, and uh, for Dylan Sampson's case, he wasn't even here during spring. And so, I mean, you got a guy that his first collegiate action is going to be, you know, today at, at practice number one. So it will be interesting to see. Last thing I want to ask you, man, uh, the – I mean, there's question marks about who's going to step up and play the other two wide receiver spots. I mean, Brew McCoy, once he clears that final hurdle, no doubt it'll be him on the outside. There's a lot of different options in the slot, but Jalen Hyatt's going to step up and and do a lot of things there. Um, the secondary is a whole other issue. We wouldn't even have time to talk about that right now. But offensive tackle, um, you return four of the five starters, and, and that's a great thing. But you got to find a left tackle. Darnell Wright shifted over to the right side in uh, spring practice. That's when he that's where he played as a freshman and sophomore. He's more comfortable there. But you got Gerald Mincy, J.J. Crawford, who are the two that are in contention for it. Dane Davis is there. He can be a swing man. He can play both. If if somebody goes down on the right side, like right, he would probably step in. He can also slide inside and play a little bit. Friend of the program. I just thought it was funny. You had Alex Golish that was talking about the three of them, and then he kept referring back to the two of them. And so, uh, But it's going to be between J.J. Crawford and Gerald Mincy. Um, but the offensive line, the outlook over there, they've got to get better in short yardage situations. But Tennessee's in a real good spot to where they've got a whole lot of experience and potentially in a guy like Dane Davis, a guy that won't start but has played, you know, has five starts under his belt. Yes, and look, if, if Hendon Hooker is going to live up to the hype, it's it's going to be because somebody steps up and helps Cedric Tillman to help Hendon Hooker. And it's also going to be because the offensive line protects him. Uh, yeah. In multiple ways, not only is Cedric Tillman or excuse me, Hendon Hooker uh, a passer, but he's also a runner. He is a dual threat quarterback and there will be designed runs in, in which this offensive line is is going to take care of him. And and look, even the guys that are returning, uh, Cooper Mays at center, Jerome Carvin at, at left guard, I assume, uh, Javante Spragans at right guard. I still think those guys have something to prove. Uh, and Spragans for sure. The, yeah, Spragans and Cooper for sure. I mean, Jerome Carvin, fifth-year senior, uh, I think he's a solid SEC offensive lineman. And, and if you're a fifth-year senior, you are what you are at this yeah. point in your career. Uh, so I, I don't know that there's another gear in Jerome Carvin's tank, uh, quite frankly. But I think there's another gear with Cooper Mays and Javante Spragans. I think there's more in that tank that Glenn Ellerby can tap into. And uh, I think it's just as important – that those three take their game to the next level on the interior as it is Tennessee finds a left tackle. Yes, left tackle is the premier position along the offensive line, but I, I – and you look, you play defensive football in, in college and, and can speak to it better than I can, but you hear NFL GMs and executives and scouts and talent evaluators. I love T.J. Watt. He, he is my favorite player on my favorite team, but – and he has all the sack numbers and whatnot, but nine times out of ten, nine out of ten executives are taking Aaron Donald because he's in the oh, yeah. middle wrecking wrecking havoc in the interior of the offensive line. Not not that necessarily Aaron Donald is a better football player than T.J. Watt. He probably is. That, that's a different type of argument. But I'm more so speaking to the, the position that he is playing and, and how prominent the interior – of the trenches, the interior of the defensive line and the interior of the offensive line. It is so crucial to successful football that those three are going to have to step up and uh, just real quick on the left tackle, because that, that is really what you asked me about. I, I would be surprised if it's not Gerald Mincy. I, I think he has more natural talent than, than a Jeremiah Crawford, but Hey, uh, Jeremiah Crawford's been here uh, a, a year longer than Mincy uh, with the staff. So you, you can't really discount that. that. That is always something to keep in the back of your head, but, uh, I, I think Gerald Mincy, out of the three tackles you mentioned him, Dane Davis, Jeremiah Crawford, I, I think he has the most natural talent. And now can Glenn Ellerby bring that out of him? Because it, if you can get solid play at left tackle, we're, we're not talking even all-SEC type of play, get solid play from him and you have Darnell Wright playing at an all-SEC level at right tackle and the three in the middle really take a step forward. Sure, you lack depth, but that offensive line, that starting five right there, uh, it, it's going to get you somewhere, especially when – Hinted hookers behind those guys. Yeah, no doubt. And if you want to have an explosive record breaking offense like you did last year, you got to find that left tackle. You got to play as a cohesive unit. So, step one in that regard, or really they have the spring as well, but step one of the official 2022 season, it starts today. Ben, thanks so much, man. Uh, you can follow Ben on Twitter at Ben McKee14. 
Uh, he's got tons of great stuff. A lot of stories coming out of allquest.com. We're getting going, man. It's the best time of the year. Absolutely. I'll, uh, I'll see you bright and early in the morning. Or I guess I've already seen you at this point when people are listening. But I look forward yeah. to seeing your pretty face far more often these weeks than the last couple of weeks. <laughs> All right, brother. We'll, uh, we'll we'll see you there. We'll have you back on the podcast later on in the week to break down some more fall camp. That has been McKee. Ben McKee 14 on Twitter. All right, been a fun show. We got the table set for fall camp 2022. You have seen and heard from Alex Golish and, and Tim Banks, the coordinators, and of course, Josh Heupel. We got Ben McKee's thoughts on a number of different things. Fall camp is here. Football season is here. No better time to subscribe on YouTube at Locked On Vols. And of course, wherever you find your podcast, please follow, subscribe, like, review, rate, five stars on Apple Podcasts. Write me a pretty little review. That means so much. Thank you guys as always. And don't forget, Twitter Tuesday coming up tomorrow. Any questions you guys may have at underscore Kaner and at Locked On Vols. We'll do it again, guys. Thank you so much. Same time, same place tomorrow. Until then, enjoy the rest of your Monday, everybody. <laughs>